Um, yeah, so there's a few yeses, a few noes. Um, Cherry, from your perspective, what um, what are sort of the, the benefits of, of doing these sorts of things like yoga for, for sports people? Uh, to be honest, I think what something if you do it uh, consistently like anything, it helps with your focus. And one of the first things I noticed in terms of physical attributes was my lung capacity of all things. So it wasn't flexibility that I noticed first. It wasn't kind of the strength in like the smaller movements around the joints. It was the lung capacity. That was the first thing I noticed. So through yoga, you learn to control your breath, find your focus and um, finding a way to regulate your breath rather than going into that space of always kind of gasping or looking for oxygen. So you, you learn to kind of balance that out. Yeah, nice. Aaron, on the spot, but from your perspective as a cricketer, how does that help us as cricketers, you know, coaches, but also players? Okay, so five years ago when I was in Scotland, I tore my rotator cuff just from overuse, not enough mobility, not enough stretching. Always stretched, but didn't do enough. Literally just ran and did weights and didn't do enough of the other stuff that I needed to do. So yeah. training all the time, coaching all the time, tore my rotator cuff and I was out for six months. And that, that injury affected me for, I reckon, about a couple of years. And then met the lovely Cherry, started doing a lot of yoga. And touch wood, since then, have not had an issue with my body. Now, I am getting old and I'm still going strong. I'm probably as fit as I've ever been. And that's, that's a lot due to the mobility that stuff that comes out of yoga. Yeah. It definitely complements everything else you do, to be honest. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting point that you said where that you're... Um, your, air, your lung capacity increases and, and, and I think a good thing as well for cricketers that they don't maybe understand but your ability to breathe and bring yourself back to level actually helps you with your decision making um, your awareness uh, your, your heart rate everything like that and uh, Peter actually did uh, a session the other week, I think it was the first week about their time that they use between balls. And if you can regulate your breathing, that's one of the big things to help lower their heart rate, decrease their stress and anxiety and stuff like that. So obviously, as you know, Aaron and yourself have said, there's a physical benefit, but there's also those other parts of it as well that can help. They're kind of the biggest bit because, I mean, like you guys know, playing sport and all that kind of stuff, playing cricket – you can push yourself physically, but then if your head is in another space, then you can't find the focus to make that actually work physically. Mm -hmm. So your breath and your, like your thoughts are directly correlated. So, you know, like if your brain's racing a million miles an hour, sometimes your breath is really short and shallow, so you're not getting enough oxygen and it just slows everything down physically as well as mentally. Absolutely. Love it. Um, and Jerry, from your perspective, what's your background where did you you know what have you done uh, how did you get into doing yoga and becoming a yoga instructor so initially um so i've done yoga for uh 10 years now so it's been a long time um initially i didn't even had no curiosity about it at all mm -hmm. i liked i was more athletics and like kind of more full-on sports yep. and then i just got a bit curious and i was like you know i'll give it a go you never know what might come out of it or how you might feel and then um kind of once i started doing that it just kind of my mental side of stuff changed a lot. So I, I just realized, like I said, as well, like with the lung capacity, like I, I did yoga, I signed up for like a 30 day thing, did the 30 days. And then I was like, I'm going to go for a run. I hadn't been for running who knows how long. And then when I started running, I just felt I could run forever. And that was the biggest thing for me, just realizing how much I'd changed physically and then using the breath to help everything else. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Um, well, I guess from today, guys, uh, I, I guess, uh the the people on here boys and girls uh you, you obviously like we have with all of our other physical challenges you'll need a little bit of space as you can see with um aaron and, and cherry they've got their, their lounge room set up so hopefully um boys and girls you've got some sort of space to be able to move your limbs around mine's probably a little bit bigger than everyone else's because i've got longer limbs but um, i should take up the whole um the whole living room everyone else should only take up a little bit of it but um yeah, what, what's it look like? What's the session outline? I think I'll take, I'll, I'll leave it over to you, but just if you can give a bit of a brief for everyone um, that, you know, what we will be doing, what the, the aim of it is, and, and just some general instructions to make their session as easy for, for them to follow you as possible. Sweet. So, yes, you'll need a bit of space, just either whatever floor you have, just make sure it's not too slippery for yourself. So please, if you've got shoes or socks on, take them off barefoot, like, 
have your hands on the ground type of thing. You can use a towel if you want to, use a carpet, use a floor, whatever you got. And then if you have it spare, maybe like a cushion or something to just support your hips because we're going to go through. We'll start off a little bit slow, go nice and gentle, and then we'll build up to a bit of warmth for the body. So we're going to be focusing this little session around shoulders and hips and your back, which is a lot of stuff you guys use, obviously, in cricket. So I wanted to form it around you guys to help you out and give you some benefits to or see and feel some benefits to this. Perfect. We'll do a little bit of core work at the end. I like it. That's what we want. All right. Well, uh, over to you, uh, Cherry. You're you're running the show, so I'll mute myself and I will find my own little space and uh, get the camera out of my face, and away we go. All right. I'll give you guys a couple of moments to get yourself sorted, and then we'll get going. Can I have that way, Let's see, make sure we're in. Yeah, it should be all good. All right. Hello. So, if you are ready, take your time. Obviously, no rush once you get started. It's about keeping a calm and clear focus, not anything else. So, don't stress over anything. Please enjoy this. Have some curiosity, exploration about it. Don't stress over it. It's the whole opposite of what we're doing. So, come to a nice cross legged position. If it feels uncomfortable having your legs crossed, your knees feel really tied up towards your body. Have a cushion or something under your bums to help lift and elevate the hips, it helps with the posture. So once you are in your seated position, sit nice and tall through the spine. Try not to lean back or forward too much. And just lay your hands to either rest on your knees or on your lap, whatever's most comfortable for your shoulders and chest. So sitting nice and tall, nice tall spine, lay your hands to rest where they need to. And then if you can for a few moments, either close down the eyes or just find something to focus upon. So all we're going to do now is start to focus on your breath. So take a really long, slow breath in. Start to notice what expands, so the belly, the chest, all the parts of the body that open up. And then a really long, slow breath out. And if you can, with every breath in, we're gonna go for about 10 rounds of breath. See if you can expand the lungs a little further every time. So breathe in a little deeper, feel the belly expand right, and right up all the way to the collarbones. And every exhale, lengthen it out, slowing it down until the belly draws towards the spine. So nice and slow, a few more rounds. So you can breathe a little deeper. Extra long breaths out. Now as you focus on your breath, as you notice the inhales come in, focus on the air drawing in through your nose. So all these little sensations allow the brain to be here rather than drifting off elsewhere outside of the room or wherever else your brain might take you. So focus on the body, focus on the breath. And every exhale as you lengthen them out into the lungs further, allows the parasympathetic nervous system to find calm in the body. So every exhale calms you down. Every inhale draws in more energy for the body. Just a few more rounds. Keep it slow, keep it deep. And start to notice where you hold tension in the body. So relax the shoulders. Soften the belly if there's a gripping through the hips or the legs, try and relax what you can. Make sure there's no tension through the jaw or the cheeks. Softening around the eyes and the brow, and even those tiny little muscles around the ears, all these little things that we don't often notice. Pay attention to it all. Give yourselves just three more rounds of breath, three more inhales, three more exhales, no rush, no race. Take your last breath in and make it the biggest you've taken all day for everything you spent. And a nice long exhale out, completely empty lungs, belly button draws towards the spine. All right, I'm gonna get Aaron to shuffle back onto his mat now. So we're gonna begin a little bit of movement and still, still nice and gentle, nice and slow to begin with, and then we gently bring in a bit more warmth to the body. This is Carl, by the way. <laughs> Bye, Shepard. Aaron, are you able to just close those curtains a little bit? There's a little bit of glare. <laughs> Oh, we want to see all of yours. Good spot. <laughs> awesome. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All good. right. And you guys can hear all good? <laughs> yep. Yep. They're all good. Cool. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to chuck a little bit of music just for background noise. And if it's too much, obviously, just give me a little yell and I will turn that off. All right. So. Take a nice big breath in and reach the hands all the way up toward the ceiling if you can, turn the gaze up. So as you reach up, think as long as you can through the arms. There's a great lifting all the way through the arms as well as through the belly. 
As you exhale, relax, hands through middle. One more time, reach the hands all the way up, big breath in. And this time as you exhale, turn your right hand to the ground and start to lean as far over as you can. So stay heavy through the hips, turn the gaze up. And that top arm is going to reach as far to the side of the room as it possibly can, great, creating a great big opening for your rib cage, your waist, all those little intercostal muscles. Now as you're here, don't hold your breath. Take a really huge breath in, create the stretch. See if you can lean a little further on your exhale, belly squeezes to spine, remember there's no rush, deep breath. Inhale, stretch both hands back towards the ceiling. We'll do one more time each side. Exhale over to your left. Plant the palm, bend in the bottom elbow. Lean over. No tension through the jaw. Relax the neck. Stay open through your chest. Huge breath in. Feel the stretch through the body. Exhale, can you lean a little deeper? Inhale, hands to ceiling. Reach up one more time each side. Exhale, places your right hand down. Lean over. Deep breath in, feel everything expanding. Sink a little deeper, lean further, exhale, squeeze and empty those lungs. Breathe in, rise up, hands to seal. Cool lungs, stretch a little taller. Exhale, over to your left, hand comes down, start to lean. Deeper breath in. Stretch a little further on the exhale, belly squeezes to spine, empty lungs completely, no air in them. Breathe in and stretch up. Now as you exhale, bring the hands through the middle and stretch them out in front of you onto the ground, walk them in front and lean the body forward. Drop the chin to chest, relax the back of the neck and just allow a gentle little sway through the shoulders and the hips just to soften through the lower spine, around the hips and the shoulders. Keep the breath going slow and steady, remembering no rushing through. Take one more huge breath in, drop the head nice and heavy. Nice big exhale out. All right, very slowly, we're going to make our way onto all fours. So I'm just going to turn around side on for you guys. Place the hands underneath your shoulders. Evenly spread the fingertips. They're not too close together, not too far apart. And if you can, we're going to get a gentle external rotation through the arms. So your thumbs are slightly forward, fingertips slightly out on the mat. Moving through our spines, getting a little warming up through the belly, through the back. As you breathe in now, drop the belly, turn the gaze up, pull the chin forward and up, drop the belly. Exhale, chin to chest, squeeze belly to spine, press into your knees, your hands, your fingertips. Create that tight in the middle of the body. A few more rounds, inhale, pull the chest forward, opening through the sternum. Exhale, squeeze the lungs empty, touch into chest. Two more, breathe in to open. Keep ripping into the hands and knees, keep the feet planted to the ground, exhale, squeeze it in. One more time like that and then we'll create a little difference. Breathe in to open. Now from here, keep the spine dipped. I don't want you to press through the tops of the feet. As you exhale, we're going to float the knees off the ground, chin to chest. So a slight little difference warming further through the belly. Keep pressing into your arms, knees and shins to ground. Breathe in, pull the sternum forward. Two more like that. Exhale, press to the tops of the feet, float the knees, squeeze chin to chest. Inhale, pull everything open. Nice bit of warming through the shoulders, the hips. Last one, exhale, squeeze everything in. We're going to hold for a little bit, but keep the breath going. So keep your shoulders over your wrists. Keep squeezing belly to spine, tuck your chin to chest. Stay for one more big breath in. Stay for the exhale, squeeze the belly tighter. Inhale, knees and chins to ground. Very carefully now, drop your hips to your heels wide and knees, come to child's pose. Stretch the hands out a little further, just like we did earlier. Take a little sway of the hips and the chest from side to side. That brief little pause, come back to all fours. Shoulders over your wrists, knees beneath your hips. From here, moving through some little chest stretches, pick up your right hand, reach all the way up, deep breath in. And then as we exhale, we're gonna thread our right arm underneath us, touch your right shoulder to the ground for just a moment, bend the left elbow, inhale, reach the right hand all the way back up. Gaze follows those right fingertips. Two more like that, exhale, thread. Touch your shoulder to the ground. Inhale, pick it up. Full lungs, great expansion. Exhale, touch. One last time, breathe in, reach all the way up as tall as you can. Open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, this time we're gonna rest the shoulder to the ground and stay for a little while. So place the shoulder to the ground, hopefully you guys can see me. Rest the head to the ground and relax your feet. Pick up your left hand, reach up, 
Stay here, staying here for a second, start to notice your hips. So if you're swaying off to one side with your bum, try and keep your hips directly over your knees. Now from here we're creating this big twist all the way through the belly, so helping the internal organs, your digestion, all that type of stuff, as well as helping your spine, your shoulders, and your hips. So keep reaching that left arm up a little taller, big breath in. And now if you have it in your body, maybe that arm wants to wrap around the spine, looking for your right hip. Squeezing the shoulder blades together, and slowly pulling the left shoulder a little further back. Stay relaxed to the jaw, no gripping through the teeth. If you're frowning, soften that. Take a huge breath in, one more. Stay through the exhale. Pick up your left hand, reach all the way up back toward the ceiling. And then breath out, left hand to ground, press into it. Your right hand reaches all the way back up. Exhale, right hand to ground, switch sides. Left hand, reach it up, breathe in. Gaze follows, we go through those threads. Exhale, tap your left shoulder to the ground, bend your right. Breathe in to rise up. Gaze follows, full up. Exhale to thread. Breathe in to lift. Exhale, thread and we stay. Place the shoulder to the ground and we stay here for a few moments. Right arm reaches all the way up and either stays here or threads over your spine, looking for your hip crease. Once you get there, if you, have it, if you don't quite have the hip crease, doesn't matter. Just think about squeezing the right shoulder back, trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together and relax the head to the ground. So soften the neck as there's tension through the jaw. And then take a couple of moments here to breathe as deeply as you possibly can. So the breathing and breathing deeper creates a stretch in the spaces that feel tight. So wherever you feel the tent and the tightness in the body, that's where you want to create the stretch and breathe a little deeper. Next, inhale, send the right hand back up towards the ceiling, reach and lengthen those arms and fingertips. Exhale, right hand to ground, left hand rises up, breathe in. Exhale, palm to ground, all right. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, we're gonna to come to our first downward facing dog. Now take a moment before you settle into stillness, we're gonna bend and sway through the knees and the hips to so start to warm up and, and wake up the backs of the legs. Achilles tendons, calves, heels, Take a few breaths here. So once again, don't hold the breath. Keep it flowing nice and slow, steady. Think about the weight of the body pressing into the hands. And as you start to warm up through hips and legs, things will start to feel hopefully a little better. So two more breaths of any movement you need to do. If you feel like the hands are slipping, just do your best to grip your thumbs and your fingertips into the ground. Press the heels of the hands into the ground. From here, start to find some stillness. So what we're gonna do is think about as much length through our spines as possible. So that's your main aim in downward dog. It's not about the legs, that will happen naturally on its own in its own time. The main focus is finding the length in our spine. So hands be pressing into the ground. We want our shoulders pressing toward our legs. So chest squeezing toward the legs. If you're bending your knees and take it, you don't want a curved spine, you want as much strengthening and straightening as possible. So if you need to bend the knees, take it, press the chest toward your thighs and then try to press the heels toward the ground. We're all going to look a little different. That's perfect, normal, natural. Take a moment here. Start to feel the shoulders, start to warm the hands, the arms. Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears as well. Keep squeezing the feet into the ground, strengthening through the belly. I want you all to press your hands a little harder into the ground, create the arms to be a little longer. Huge breath in. Nice, we exhale out, squeeze the belly to centre. All right, breathe in, roll into plank. Shoulders over your wrists. Nice, long line, hips aren't too low, hips aren't too high. Long line from your heels all the way to your shoulders. Gaze is just in front of your fingertips, take a deep breath in. And then on your exhale, either knees to ground or no knees, we're gonna lower all the way to the ground, nice and slow. Soften everything to ground on top of toes, Breathe and lift the chest, float the hands just off the ground. Press the tops of your feet into the ground, nice and strong through the belly. Next, exhale, pressing hands to ground, hips back into downward dog. Just like that, two more times. Inhale, roll forward, mean plank. Exhale, knees or no knees, you lower, slow. Strengthen the lower back, breathe in, lift the chest, press the tops of feet into the ground, float the hands. Downward dog, exhale. One more time like that. Breathe in, roll forward, slow. Feel the belly turn on. 
Nice and strong through the shoulders. Exhale to lower, slow pace of your breath. Inhale to lift the chest. Float the hands, press the feet into the ground. Exhale, downward dog. All right. Take a deep breath in, set yourselves up, press the palms to ground, squeeze the heels toward the earth. Nice, strong, clearing breath out, out the mouth, out the nose, whatever you need. Next, inhale, right leg will press up toward the ceiling. Press, press, press as high as you can go if the knee is bent, that's fine, but really try and straighten it out. Straight through both arms, deeper breath in, lift the heel a little higher. Now on your exhale, shoulders over wrists, right knee is going to squeeze to your right elbow or tricep, so out to the side of you. Stay for a second, press further into your hands, press further into your left big toe. Stay for a breath in, stay for an exhale. Inhale, right leg nice and high, breathe in. This is not easy. Exhale, right knee to right elbow, same thing, when hold this time. Inhale, send the right leg back up behind you. Exhale, right knee to elbow. And very slowly, pick that knee up a little higher and then place that right foot outside the right hand. Lower your left knee. From here, fingertips to ground or palms flat, whatever your body can feel is comfortable for you. Press the hips forward, lift through the chest, so nice and tall and proud through the body. Your back toes are tucked, so really press your big, your left big toe into the ground and your right knee and right toes are gonna to turn outward away from your mat or center line. So pulling up nice and proud to the chest. Deep breath in, fill up the belly of the chest. Nice long exhales out. Now we have a couple of options here to get really deep into the lower hip, also into your hip flexor in front of the hip. So either, if this is enough for you, it feels really intense, then stay here. Just focus on pulling the hips forward, chest up nice and proud. Otherwise, your right hand can press the inside of your right knee and press it open. You can stay there. You can reach the right hand up and kind of lengthening through the belly and the spine a little further. That might be enough for you. Or you can turn the hand back and reach to your left foot. And if you do have the foot, we're going to pull it toward our bodies first of all. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. You're still going to get the same effect to the body if that foot is on the ground and the hand is on the knee. So if you have it, keep pulling the chest forward, hips forward, squeeze the foot toward the body. Now changing that ever so slightly, start to kick that foot away from the body, pressing into hand, turning the chest open. Keep the hips pressing forward, keep the chest lifted so you're not collapsing into the lower spine. One more huge breath in, kick that foot a little further away. And then very gently release that back foot. If you have it, right hand's gonna come to the ground. Take a nice big breath in a little higher to the chest. And on the exhale, we're gonna pull the hips back into a half split. So straighten your right leg, sink onto your left heel. Sink the weight of the chest down, bend the elbows, bring the hands in closer, whatever you need for your body to find your balance. So don't fall over. Feel the right heel pressing into the ground. Take one more big breath in. Nice big exhale out. Look forward, bend into your right knee. Tuck your left toes, send the hands high. Now think about squeezing your knees kind of toward each other, squeezing legs together. I'm going to pick up the left knee and come into a crescent lunge. It's a nice, nice big lunge, nice big open of your hips. Reach the arms as tall as they can, lengthen through the belly, shoulders over your hips. Big breath in. Exhale, hands to ground. Now from here, this is a nice little challenge for everybody, even me. Press into the hands, press the left leg nice and long. And we're going to try and squeeze the right knee into your nose. Squeeze it underneath you. Stay for a nice big breath in. Stay for the exhale. Step the right foot back, we are in plank. Knees or no knees on your exhale, we're lowering down all the way to the ground. Breathe in, lift the chest, float the hands. Nice, strengthening through the back of the body. Exhale, downward dog, find your way there. Once you get there, set yourselves up, press some hands, find your nice long spine, deep breath in. Nice strengthening through the belly on the exhale. Nice and broad through the collarbones. Inhale, left leg reaches all the way up. We do the other side. Press that leg as long as you possibly can. Squeeze the chest toward your right thigh. Press into those arms, nice and strong. Both arms are straight. Lift your left heel a little higher, breathe in. Exhale, left knee to left, tricep side of the body. We stay for this first one. So broad through those shoulders, press the hands into the ground, squeeze the knee up. Deep breath in, 
Slide to the exhale. One more breath in. One more exhale. Left leg rises. Inhale, press it up and away. Three-legged dog. Exhale, meets tricep. Breathe up, lift it away. Exhale, knee to tricep. Slowly left foot outside the left hand, place it down. Right knee to the ground, right toes stay tucked. Once again, come to the fingertips, press into the ground, press hips forward, lift through the chest. Left knee turns out, left toes turned out. Stay for a moment if you want to, a gentle sway through the hips, just help the hips kind of warm up and loosen up rather than get a bit stuck. Keep the breath slow and steady. Start to feel the warmth building in the body. All right. So bring in those little variations. If this is enough for you, stay here. Keep focusing on pulling the hips forward. Otherwise, left hand to inside the left knee, pressing it away, leaning back. Otherwise, reaching up, thinking about lengthening the lower belly, spine. Otherwise, reaching back, or if it's there for you, grabbing onto the foot. Obviously, I've been doing this for a lot longer than you guys, but I'm, I'm guessing. So if it's not there for you, don't worry about it. If it is there, squeeze the foot toward the body. Keep the chest lifted, so nice and long through the lower back. Keep pressing your right hand or fingertips into the ground. The left knee presses open. Slow down the breath. Once again, focus on where you feel the stretch in the body. That's where you're going to want to focus your inhales and exhales. Right, if you're still pulling on that foot, Start to lengthen it away from you, kicking it into the hand and away from the body, pulling the chest further open. And a nice big twist all the way through the body. One more big breath in. On the exhale, slowly, gently release the foot. If you have it, left hand comes back down toward the ground. Take a second to lift the chest, come onto the fingers, push the hips forward. And then slowly coming into that half split, pull the hips back. Left leg straight, hands wherever they need to be to keep you supported. Allow the head to drop, hang heavy, relax the back of the neck. A couple of moments here. Keep pressing that left heel into the ground, left toes pulling toward the body. Nice and flex and active through that foot. All right, last breath in. Last exhale. Turn the gaze forward, start to find that low lunge. Press into your left foot, left knee. Now, if we can, we're going to send the hands all the way up toward the ceiling, long through the belly, long through the spine, everything squeezing to centre. Press into those right big toes, float the right knee, come into your crescent lunge. Squeeze everything to midline, reach up a little taller, turn the gaze up, deep breath in. Exhale, hands to ground. That little challenge, can you squeeze that left knee in toward your nose, squeeze the heel toward your bum. Take a deep breath in. Stay for the exhale. Slowly left foot steps back, we meet in plank. Deep breath in, fill the lungs. Exhale, lower all the way down, knees or no knees. Lift the chest, float the hands, press heavy through the tops of the feet. Exhale, down the dog. Now you have a couple of moments here. We'll take a moment if you want to pedal through the legs or stay in stillness. Think about strong pressure of the hands into the ground. Squeezing the chest toward your thighs. If you need to bend the knees, you take it. You still want to get that stretch through the backs of the legs and the hamstrings. Huge breath in. Or child's pose. <laughs> or child's pose if you're knackered. <laughs> Last little moment, deep breath in. Exhale, bring your knees to the ground. All right. So we are going to do a nice little bit of, not that you haven't done enough already. Oh. We're going to do a little bit of core work and then we'll slow it down completely and get ready for a little bit of rest. A little bit more of the hips, but nothing too crazy. So, find hands flat beneath your shoulders, even with those fingertips. Of course, if you need rest, please take it. I know this is probably something a little bit different for most of you who don't do it very often, so please just enjoy it. So, hands beneath your hips. Demonstrate it first and then we'll do it. All right, so <laughs> I'll give you guys a little demonstration. So this is what we have fondly named our square leg ab exercise. So right. you'll see why. So it'll be a nice strong flat position. If you have to, you can keep one knee on the ground. I don't mind, honestly. Whatever you guys can do is all equivalent to what you can physically do for your body. So don't feel wrong or right about it. Just do what you can put effort in. So strong pressure into those hands, nice and broad to your shoulders. What we're going to do is pick up the right heel from there. Just watch now. Just give you a little demonstration. What will be? Exhale, knee squeezes toward the right armpit. 
then we're going to lower the knee and hips may drop a little bit. We're going to shift that knee over to left wrist, then to the right wrist, back down to left wrist, right wrist swings up to right arm. If that will be one round, we'll do a couple of those, we'll probably do three. And then we'll switch. If we need it, we'll have a break, a little child's pose, and then we'll switch back to the other leg. So it'll be knee to armpit, wrist, wrist, armpit, down, across, back up, and done. So if you are ready, find yourselves in your plank position. We are ready. Hands firmly on the ground. Press through those heels nice and long. If you need one leg on the ground, place your left knee on the ground for now. Inhale, the right leg lifts behind you nice and long. Exhale, knee squeezes toward your right armpit. Very slowly lower your right knee toward your right wrist. Across to left wrist, just off the ground. Squeeze up to left armpit, that's your exhale. Inhale, lower down to left wrist. Across to right wrist, right armpit. <laughs> right wrist, left wrist, left armpit. Left wrist, right wrist, right armpit. One more round, right wrist, left wrist, left armpit, left wrist. <laughs> Right wrist, right armpit, step back. Shoulder the knees, child's pose. Child's pose. Take a little second to sway through the shoulders and the hips. Good work, guys. Deep breath in. <clears throat> Long breath out. Now, last side, if you are ready, come and join me. Find your all fours. Step the toes back. Long through the legs. Big breath in, left leg lifts. Exhale, left knee to armpit. <laughs> Exhale up to your left wrist, right wrist, right armpit, right wrist, left wrist, left armpit, left wrist, right wrist, right armpit, <laughs> right wrist, left wrist, left armpit, last round, left wrist, right wrist, right armpit, down, across, up, step back, child's pose, <laughs> child's pose, rest, Laugh, melt, whatever you need to do. Cry, I don't mind. Cry. The heels sway through the chest and the shoulders, reset, soften the elbows, relax the body. Huge breath in here for the back of the lungs, the back of the body expand. Nice to get to out the mouth. All right, we can start to relax the body now. So I want you to come onto your belly and do a nice big shoulder stretch. So I would like you to lengthen your left arm out nice and long, in line with your shoulder, so make sure it's not going down toward the hip. You want to in line with the shoulder, if not, a little higher up. So place the palm flat down to the ground. Now from here, you're going to turn your left cheek to the ground, relax the head, and your right hand is going to be in front of the face, into the ground with the elbow up. Take a breath in. Then on your exhale, your right leg is going to thread over and behind you. Allow that toe to rest onto the ground, and then relax the legs. So your right hand is in front of the face on the ground to stop the body from falling back over. And then just spend a couple moments here to actually open up through the shoulder and the chest. Allow that twist through the belly and the hips. Slow down the breathing. Longer exhale now that we're slowing down to the end of class. Bowlers, this is a very, very good stretch for you. have three more breaths here guys so three more huge inhales and three extra long exhales out that's what's going to make the space and the muscles and the stretch so really take your time to focus on the breath that's what's going to create all the benefits notice if there's any tension in the jaw or the brow it's more kind of release any tension that you're holding in the body without realizing it soften the belly relax the toes Take your last breath in. Exhale, come back onto your bellies and your chest. So I'm going to make a little adjustment with that left arm. So instead of it being straight out, hopefully you guys can see, we're going to take a nice 90 degree bend in that arm. So palm flat to the ground, elbows in line with the shoulder. Once again, elbow can be above shoulder line, but not closer to hip. So you want it nice and level in line, otherwise it will be higher. From here, turn your left cheek back down to the ground. Your right hand still in front of the face. Turn the right foot back. So this just deepens the stretch into the more of the front of the shoulder and a bit more into the pec. So start off with an open stretch and we kind of intensify a little bit. The foot doesn't have to be super far away from you. Just allow it to rest on the ground if you can. Take a few moments here. Close down the eyes, it feels nicer. Relax as much as you can. I know it feels a little awkward.
the more space you guys have in your bodies using these stretches and mobility and flexibility, the more room you have to move. I'm sure it's going to help with your bowling, stretching your back, everything like that, all these things. Take two more of your deepest breaths in. Right, gently rolling onto your front, this time switching sides and your right arms out nice and long. Turn your right cheeks to ground, make sure the arms in line with the shoulder. Left hand in front of the face, elbow pressing up, press into your left palm, left leg threads behind you. Once again, we have a few moments here, so start to relax into it. Notice where you feel the stretch in the body, might be from the chest or the shoulder, might be somewhere different. Now, if you're feeling any kind of sharp pains in your arm or shoulder, just roll back onto your belly and see if you can adjust the arm a little differently for yourself. So we're all built a little differently. Our joints kind of all sit a little differently to each other. So just do what's right for your body. More rounds of breath. Last breath in. Exhale, rolling onto the belly, this time taking that 90 degree bend in your right arm. So make sure the elbows are lined with the shoulder, take a check. Palm flat to ground and slowly rolling over. Left leg falls behind, left hand in front of the face for support. Each side of the body is also going to feel, I'm sure you guys are noticing that left and right side's mostly a little different. So one side's normally a little bit tighter. Doesn't mean it's bad or wrong, just means it gives you something to focus on and what you need to work on. More opportunity. Keep two more, your deepest breath. So you can lengthen out the exhale, slow everything down. Slowly coming back onto your front. Press those hands underneath the shoulders and slowly press into child's pose. So allow those knees to widen, hips draw toward the heels. And just for a second, allow that swaying to the chest, to the hips, lower spine, everything to relax. And then over the next two breaths, come back to all fours. We're going to come into a nice, nice big hip stretch for you guys before we finish it all off. So pick up that right leg, send it nice and long. Big breath and really stretch it out as far as you can. Then as you exhale, squeeze that knee underneath you and shuffle that leg around so we can come into pigeon. So get a couple options for this. This is why I ask you guys to get a pillow or something if you might need it. So soften that shin toward the ground and then start to reach your left leg back. Now, if that's not there for you to have that left leg completely lengthened back, you can bend left knee until you bring leg, the legs to a stag still going to get through the hip. Otherwise, if you can come into full pigeon, that left leg is lengthened back, the toes are tucked to support that knee, tucked stop from what wiggling around. And we sit up nice and tall. Now, the cushion. So if it feels really uncomfortable on that back knee, that cushion or something soft can come underneath it to support it. Otherwise, this cushion or whatever you have can go underneath your right hip. If it feels like it's really high off the ground, prop the pillow under your hip and allow it to rest down. Now, if this is enough for you, stay here. Otherwise, if you're sticking with me and Aaron, press into those fingertips, keep pressing into your left big toe, sit up nice and tall. You want to think about your hips and your pelvis kind of pulling forward so you have this lengthening through the lower belly. Start to press your right shin into the ground. Now, you can have also, I should mention, your right heel can either be really close toward your body or further away. It doesn't matter as long as it's not causing any real sharp or burning pains in your knees or your hips. From there, nice and tall through the spine. Now, we're either going to stay here with both hands on the ground, or if you're sticking with me for this little bit of warming through the hips, one hand may reach up, or if you have it in you, both hands reach up. Pressing that right leg so strong into the ground, lifting high up through the chest. Take a big breath and reach as tall as you can, extend the fingertips. Exhale, send the hands behind you if you can, interlace the palms. This is just something you can do, you don't have to do it. Pull the knuckles away to with me. Breathe and lift the chest up so nice and long through the spine. 
Then as you exhale, release the hands in front of you, fingertips to the ground. We're going to do this little pigeon push up. So it's all through the hips. Now, most of the weight is through the leg, not through the fingertips. The hands are just for support. So take a breath in. So length of your exhale, we lower down. Keep pulling the chest forward slow. Everything through the right leg. If you want to, you can have the hands off the ground. Inhale, pick all the way back up. So either hands on the ground, off, it's up to you. Slow, lower down. We have one more of these. Breathe in to lift. Nice, big lift. And then it's time to exhale, soften all the way down, either hands, elbows, or completely lying flat, depending on how your body is feeling. And we have a couple of moments here, so take your time to sink into it. The body will relax and find space if you give it a chance, but it does need a chance to, so slow down the breath. Of course, because uncomfortable is something you guys don't do very often, so just bear with it. It will find more room, it will get easier. Start to notice you begin to fidget and twitch as the body and the mind's way of distracting you from where you're at. So focus on where you feel the stretch, if it's really intense or not, and focus the breath there. You can I want you to count the breath. At least four rounds of breath here. Take one last breath in. Nice big exhale out. Set the hands back up. If you can wiggle that left leg in a little closer. And then your right leg, you're going to give it a shake or wriggle or whatever you need to do to kind of make it feel like it's alive again. Give it a shake, a wriggle out, pedal out the leg, whatever you need to do. All right. And then we do it all on the other side. The hands beneath the shoulders, left leg extends behind you. Big breath and lift that leg as long as you possibly can. Exhale, knee, squeeze it in and then thread ankle underneath you. Start to adjust to this side. Both sides will be completely different. So adjust what you need. If your right leg is nice and long, still keep those toes tucked. Otherwise, if you want to, you can stag the legs and you can fold there. Still going to get it if you just sort of kind of shift to what's right for your body. If you're with me on this, settle in. Hands to ground, nice and tall through the body, right toes are tucked, that's important. Now either one or both hands is going to reach up. One might be enough for you. Strong pressure that left leg into the ground, shoulders over the hips if you can. Big breath in, reach as tall as you possibly can, reach up a little higher, lengthen those arms. Exhale, hands behind you, interlace the palms if you can get it. On your next inhale, knuckles will pull away, chest lifts up. Exhale, release the hands in front of you, maybe those little push ups. Lay the fingertips to the ground when you have the strength in your body and around the hips, that mobility, then you can have them off the ground. Take a breath in. Exhale, slowly lower the chest toward the ground. Breathe in to lift, keep that lengthening through the chest. Think about the sternum as where the direction of energy is going. Exhale, gets pulled forward. Breathe in, lift all the way up. Down, exhale. Last one. Breathe in to lift. I think I may make you guys do an extra one. Why not? Soften all the way down. Now, either, like I said before, it's up to you. This might be enough for you. The hands and arms nice and tall. Otherwise, forearms or elbows to the ground. You can bring a pillow underneath the elbow, or you can lie all the way flat, depending on how much room you have. We have a few moments here, so close down the eyes. Start to notice your body looks for things to fidget with, scratching, itching, fixing clothes, fixing hair, picking nails, whatever you kind of think you need to do, allow that to rest. See if your focus can bring you to a space that allows you to focus here on your breath. Focus on the stretch. Relax the jaw, soften the belly. No frowning, no creasing the brow. You can relax the shoulder blades, back of the neck. A few more moments, guys. Breathe a little deeper and a little longer.
Almost there. Two more breaths. Keep as you can. Fill the lungs a little further. Broaden the belly a little more. Nice. We exhale out. Slowly step those hands all the way back up. Dragging the right knee back in, walking it in. Then giving your left leg a little shake, wiggle, roll out, whatever you need. All right. Now we are in Sweet. for our Shavasana. Sweet. Little rest pose at the very end. So please come to a lying position. Legs out, toes out from center line. Either you can have the hands resting on the belly to kind of focus on the breath, or you can turn them out down by the side of the body. So either way, however way you lie, lie comfortably. So no more effort required in the body. Close down the eyes. There's nothing else to do. This is now to allow all the stretching, all the effort you've put through the body and the breath to now come to rest. Allow the mind to find ease. And if the brain is still rattling away, thinking of a million different things, focus on everything you feel in the body. So the way you feel the lungs expand and then soften, the rise and fall of the belly and the chest. If there's any residual tension, the belly, the hips, the legs, the jaw, completely relax. There's nothing else to think about. We only have a few moments here. So melt away, let it all go. We have at least seven breaths here, seven inhales, seven exhales, slow it all down. No more need for control. Notice a gentle flow of air in and out of the nose. Final two breaths. Start to breathe a little bit deeper again. For the lungs, the belly a little more. Really long breaths out. Last one, breathe in as deep as you can. Nice, big exhale out. Take a big stretch of the arms all the way over head. Stretch of the legs, point the toes, reach up. Out. And as you exhale, roll onto one side and then very slowly come to a seated position on your mat. Thank you guys for joining me for some yoga. Please let me know how you guys feel and what you've been thinking, how it felt. Any questions are welcome. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Work, time. Yeah, good work, guys. That was hard. Big tree. Hello. How'd Hello. you go? Yeah. I haven't done that for a while. <laughs> you, you look really zen out. Look here. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I had the I uh, turned the heater off though because it was pretty warm for the first. Yeah, it gets warm. Hard. You're even slow, but it gets warm quickly. Yeah. Yoga is easy, hard. Absolutely. Um, all right. Who has some Q and A's for uh, Cherry and maybe Aaron, but maybe probably Cherry. <laughs> I'm loving this one. How are you doing this non-stop, Jerry? <laughs> How much longer will this go for, Jerry? Please yeah. stop. <laughs> and Anto, uh, I don't think an Anto really, uh, I think he found it a little bit tough. Uh, it is. That's the uh, thing. I think that's kind of what um, your one of your initial questions was kind of, I guess, like how it all began. And I think what got me kind of hooked or kept me coming back was the fact that it surprised me that it wasn't just relaxed, stretch, breathing, really slow stuff. It's actually really challenging. Yeah. And I've become so much stronger than that kind of what I thought <laughs> I would get from yoga, which is kind of what kept me coming back. Absolutely. I think it's definitely, definitely underrated. I was the same thing. I was the, you know, the big, tall, big unit was like, oh, 
do I do yoga just yeah. to relax me sort of thing? But yeah. um, you know, once once I got into it, I was hooked. You know, I, I love yoga, yeah. I love Pilates. Um, yeah. and like you said, it's a it's a really hard workout. Most yeah. you know blokes stereotypically yeah. are like, oh, it's yoga, not hard. Yeah. Yeah. See a couple of big tree trunks running around trying to put their body in weird positions, and it's yeah. it's a lot harder than what they think. So yeah. Um, a couple of questions now. So. Um, Daniel Sinclair has asked, how many times a week should we do this? Ooh. Well, how much time have you got? Um, <laughs> so just like, I think kind of the, the blanket rule, like with anything you do, the yep. more consistently you do something, the more you're going to notice the effects and the benefits of it. So if you can do, you know, a, a couple of minutes a day, brilliant. If you can do, if you can only do it once a week, brilliant. If you can do it a couple of times a week, magic. Just like I guess most sports or anything you're trying to do, they say if you can do a minimum of three times a week, it's gonna you're gonna notice some differences. Yeah. So whatever you can do, it's all gonna be beneficial, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, and no, uh, this is from an anonymous person, but um, are we are these exercises good to help improve an injury? Depends on your injury. So a lot of the stuff that I did for you guys because I know that with talking to Aaron and uh, a few conversations that obviously you guys or you guys. Cricketers can get a lot of stress fractures, lower spines, a lot of shoulder injuries because a lot of things that are overused and your hips. So that's why a lot of this stuff is incorporating a lot of your core, everything you do to balance you, to help you twist, help you rotate is through your core, which also is co directly correlated to your spines. So the more you can strengthen those tiny little intricate muscles along the back, through the sides of the body, around the ribs and hips and shoulders, is going to help kind of prevent that or at least strengthen things to stop them from occurring perhaps as often and yep. then also if we're strengthening kind of the shoulders and the hips as well and also not only strengthening them but also creating this space you've got more more room to move to hopefully stop that short amount of space you might have initially if that makes mm -hmm. sense absolutely i'm just going to add, add on to that so if you're injured obviously go see a physio yeah. first to make yeah. sure that you're uh, yeah going okay and they'll give you specific stretches yeah. to get going but once you're moving um, yoga is is really really good for you because it does it targets the little muscles so yeah. normally when we're running or when we're gymming or whatever we're targeting big muscles when we're doing yoga it, it tar targets all the smaller muscles that yeah. sometimes go unnoticed yeah yeah absolutely it's a uh, it's a good um, what would you say sort of it, 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 it keeps you together like once you're ready yeah. once you yeah. once you're back fit it, this yeah. is a great um great opportunity for you yeah. to continue to get uh better but also it just keeps you um keeps you together yeah um, and it's one of those things you don't need it like you don't need props you don't need like weights you don't need to be outdoors you can do it anywhere yeah you can do it absolutely anywhere absolutely um kaylee has asked do you do you do kids classes in perth They've, yeah, an opportunity there for you if you don't, but by the sounds of it, there's a couple of people that have really enjoyed it. So I haven't started any kids classes yet, but I have been thinking about it. So if it is something that is, is wanted, we can definitely start talking about it a bit more and organizing something. Perfect. Um, Daniel Sinclair has asked, should we do this before a game or after? So I wouldn't say to do a full half an hour session before a game because no. even half an hour can, or tw whatever it was, it can still take quite a bit of energy. And when you guys are doing your cricket, you probably want a bit more, something that's a bit quicker because this is a lot slower. So it's kind of different muscles and different way of movement to what you guys actually want. So sure. kind of things um, I've suggested Aaron or Aaron's kind of done before games is he'll do some more, um, not static, what's the word? Dynamic. Dynamic stretches. So you can do things where they're a bit more, there's a bit more movement to them. So you still come into like, um, I think I made you guys do a lizard lunge. So instead of just keeping the hips still, you can kind of move the hips a little more or just so you can still creating that warmth in the joint, if yeah. that makes sense. Absolutely. And it's also even probably a good day for the next day. If anyone's like, yeah, definitely. Can definitely walk up and bowl 23 overs in the heat and it's yeah. really um it's a really good opportunity to do it yeah. as a recovery thing like in between days yeah perfect all I right do. well thank you what well, sorry i do i do those stretches yeah. for for the game so we'll go for our little lap i'll do a handful of them I'll, I'll do pigeon i'll do the shoulder ones um and then we'll do our dynamic stuff and then get into our, our skill stuff and then we're ready for the game so 
Like but, those little pigeon push-ups are great because they want the hips. They don't just stretch them out. They also create the strength around the hip joint itself. So it's not just lengthening, it's also strengthening as well. Perfect. I love it. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, well, obviously, every, there were a lot, of, you know, lots of people loved it. Um, and we will uh, we'll, we'll speak soon. We've got a trivia um, a trivia night on tonight, uh, a cricket race trivia night, which all the families will be getting involved. Um, oh, for those of you who are still on uh, your prize, again, will be the opportunity to get on and ask questions face-to-face -face with one of our uh, professional players next week. So more on that once the, uh, once the, the trivia stuff starts. But again, Jerry and also Aaron, you know, really appreciate you taking some time out for any of, all of these guys and girls uh, to teach them other aspects of how, you know, these things actually influence their cricket. And it's a massive thing. So hopefully there's a couple more people that are wanting to, investigate um, yoga a little bit more because it's definitely beneficial. Thank you guys all for joining in. Good job, awesome. Tony. Yeah, well done. Good job. Thanks again. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See ya.